Wow, we just got straight into it. Hello and welcome to the Somewhat Daily Backup for Wednesday, the 18th of November. I am your host, Nick Nick by Richardson, and I am joined by Peter the... Pete Boy Peterson. Uh, is it Pete Boy? Is nah. that where... No, no, I'm Woodsman. I well, have to be just for this woodsman. episode. That's true. I, I was uh, uh, Woods Baby. Woods Baby. Are you still a Woods Baby? I don't feel like you are. I feel like you're... I'm now a, I'm a Woods uh, prepubescent teen. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Nothing goes wrong with the words prepubescent in a sentence. <laughs> Good Lord. Um, how are you doing, Peter? Not bad. I got yeah. a little tickle in my throat just now. Oh, you've probably eaten <coughs> no, too many M&Ms, M&Ms directly before we hop on You're right. camera. We got to stop eating M&Ms for breakfast, but we buy so <laughs> yeah, many of them. We have to- <laughs> so can I, uh, everyone here will appreciate this because I did it literally while doing the news on Monday. If you watch the news on Monday, then you would have seen at some point after the alarm went off and I said, do we need snacks? Um, mm. I kind of just zoned out a little bit. And the reason I zoned out is because I ordered things on Amazon um, to make sure that they would get here as soon as possible. Let me talk you through the order, Peter. Uh, they're all arriving today, I'm by listening. the way. I'm listening. Oh, where? At, the, at the post office or at your house? No, 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 at the post office, <clears throat> okay. at, at the office. I think because like, because that would be like a dodgy business move of you to be like getting M&Ms delivered to your house and then siphoning a bit off the top before they make it That's to the studio. Right. And I That's know right. you would do that, you scum. I would. I would. You'd be like, why are all of these cracked open? Why are all these tubs open? Uh, we've got four <clears throat> boxes of Coke, no sugar. That's a lot. Well, it's actually just the 10 cans because okay, the 30 okay, cans okay, okay, were going to okay. take too long to deliver. So it's yep. still 40 cans of coconut sugar. That's a lot. I've got four packets of M&M mix-ups just to spice it up a little bit. What are m M&M, What's in an M&M mix-up? So it's the green M&M bag and it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just okay. a combination of crispy, crispy chocolate. Peanut standard. Yeah. Um, Good mix. Good mix. So four bags of those, 335 grams a bag. I've got three buckets of chocolate M&Ms, three buckets of peanut M&Ms, mm. and two buckets of fruits Skittles. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So that's six, seven, that's eight buckets of <laughs> candy. Just enough. <laughs> yeah, plus four <laughs> bags of candy. But then we balance that all out with 40 cans of something that doesn't have any sugar in it. <laughs> totally totally but just and poison. then when it all mixes in your stomach mm-hmm. <laughs> there's a there's a real party going on down there there is a real party going on down there um i, I should have gotten the caramel m ms because they're delicious but the um they just they weren't available on amazon so maybe we need to go to a supermarket for that yeah i'm not a fan of i'm not a i'm not i'm not very adventurous when it comes to my m ms no you're not hey. Crisp, well, you're- like, it took me years to like crispy m ms <laughs> Crispy and, M&Ms are so good. And you know how much I love pretzels. I don't want pretzels okay. in an M&M. I, I will. I'd get, talk to me in five years and I'll, they'll be my favorite. Yeah, But of I, don't, I don't want that. That's disgusting. Pretzel M&Ms, delicious. Uh, mint M&Ms are the best, says uh, Arpitamus. I've had those. I wasn't crazy about them. Um, but, uh, but I mean, any M&M I'll eat. A- M&M I actually think could be the greatest, the greatest candy of all. Totally. And it's not always the favorite, but it is a staple. It's, it's always staple. good. Particularly in our office. It is a, sta- eight <laughs> it's a staple of, of our diet. Every two weeks, eight <laughs> buckets get delivered to the office. <laughs> Oy vey. Um, uh, uh, so, word. hello and welcome. So, uh, but the reason all this came up is because um, generally, like when I talk, I talk fine. I really have to clear my throat. I really need to cough. Yeah. And then and then I come in on a Thursday evening. I arrive about an hour before we go live for the show. And during that hour, we're hanging out, we're talking about the show, but like we're also just like catching up a little bit. Um, how was your day? Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, there'll be a couple of buckets, some buckies open, and I'll get some <laughs> handfuls in. And then Pete's like, stop eating a ton of chocolate before you go on camera because that's the phlegm builds up. And then that's why I always end up coughing and going, <clears throat> oh my goodness, excuse me. Sorry, I don't know what's happening. And it's like every single time Pete looks at me, he's like, you know what's happening. You just ate 40 fucking m ms <laughs> It's every time. It's every, every time. time. It is every time. But I feel like if I, now that I've shared it, like that excuses it, right? <laughs> By telling people I what's wish, happening. I wish that was a universal truth for anything that you did wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's like once you would, it's like you only do the first step 
of uh, of AA. Yeah, you're like I am an alcoholic, so that's yeah. it's fine so now it's that fine. I've said it. <laughs> you're on a. I told him I was going to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like to, Your Honor. I would like to evoke the uh, Richardson Eminem defense of 2020. <laughs> uh, best yes, Eminem please. in the chat. Oh my goodness! Milk chocolate versus crispy. It's a full on tie at the moment. What is this? What is how? This? Let me vote. Oh, it's over. It was only 30 votes. No one cares. Only 30 people versus- care. About- <laughs> That's an insanely split. Where the fuck was Peanut? Which is obviously the best one. That's my why God. no one voted. Yeah. That's true. Um, well, we should probably get on with the show. We, of course, can't get on with the show without mentioning two very special people. The first very special person is Simon Millich. Simon Millich, you are today's patron uh, pocketeer extraordinaire. Thank you very much for your patronage, Simon. It's a pleasure to have you as part of the company. Um, may you never begin to write an email that gets mm. you really worked up directly before you have to go on camera because mm. it's very hard to come down from that. Um, yep. you need, you need some sort of buffer and I, I can, I recommend buckets of M&M's chat <laughs> as being a good segue for your mood. And also the, the sweet bops that Gus found for the intro to our, to the show from, uh, the production library. Cause it's like, there's a lot of bad music in production libraries, but he found some good ones and they just, they just, they wake me up. They do. They're good songs. Can I just say what the, whoever is making these polls. And let me tell you that I love our mods more than life itself, but whoever's doing it is a real piece of shit because the second, the second best Eminem list is mini Eminems, which is like, they're just Eminems, but condensed. They are Armand, fun though. They, they are, are fun. Oh, fuck. They're so fun, aren't they? Um, Almond, Mint, Dark, Caramel and White Chocolate. <laughs> Where is Peanut? Where? Peanut, Peanut, Peanut. Mm. 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 <laughs> peanut is literally one of the two mascot M&Ms. Have you it thought is. about that? There is the red one and there is the yellow one. The yellow one fucking filled with peanut. Give us some, Why is give that us some on the list. While you're deep in there, give us I some uh, ASMR, mate. I can hear some lip smacking going on. Where the fuck is peanut? <laughs> That's me. That's the that sound of my like throat. You're eating a peanut. <laughs> And then try to talk afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> good. Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> very sorry, everyone, for that. No one was happy about what's going on right there. That's but terrible. You know um, what you signed up for. You do. Uh, and you signed up at patreon.com forward slash back pocket. That's where you signed up and you knew what you were doing. Uh, so thank you very much to Simon Millich. And then also a big thank you to one of the OG patrons, one of the OG viewers of Who us and our content. Be? Who could this be? Oh, I don't know, but he brings you the somewhat daily backup twice a week, nearly every single week. And that, there of course, is. is Tim from the Learn Programming Academy. Get your exclamation marks out in the chat for Tim. Because Tim is here to code you a better poll than the Eminem polls that we've just seen. Tim, Tim knows. Tim is everywhere. You say Tim is here, but Tim is Tim is e- ethereal. He lives in he the is. code all around us. He does. He's like uh, that scene in The Matrix um, where uh, Neo sees all the code. Tim wrote he that says, scene. He says, no. Tim. Yeah, there you go. Good. <laughs> that was in the extended cut. Yeah, uh, there was. There was also that line where he gets <laughs> he gets that thing shoved in his back of his head. Yeah, and then he go, and then he wakes up and he goes, <gasps> "I know Tim." Yeah, and then yeah. there's the bit that great scene where he's like sitting on the chair and they're like installing programs, and he's like, mm. "I'm going to learn programming academy," and he's like, and then Tank or whatever his name is like, "Yep, yep." Uh, We're going Tim- to learn programming academy. Smooth. <laughs> Tim is also the woman in the red dress. Um, <laughs> uh, but if, once you've watched The Matrix and spotted all the Tim references, then head to learn programming academy. Tim will teach you how to program with the easiest tutorials you've ever had in your entire life. I can't guarantee that. Maybe you're terrible at coding and you'll actually find it very difficult. But if you do, Tim is probably the person who can explain it to you the best. There are absolute ton of uh programming tutorials there tim can cover you um in so many different uh areas of expertise when it comes to uh code tim, i'm just saying things pete i'm just uh, i was just waiting to hear what he was going to cover us in and i'm uh, glad that was areas <laughs> of coding 
It should have been peanut <laughs> M&Ms. Uh, and uh, most of the tutorials are video. They are short and they are uh, most of them are $20 or less. So it's easy to learn how to code and you too can become the woman in the red dress. All right, <laughs> let's jump into this because I have a hard yes. out at 11.30. You I have do. a hard out. Hard out. I leave this and I walk directly into another meeting. And by walk, I mean open up a different <laughs> <Old> tab. tab. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first up today, Microsoft coming out. This Microsoft Bethesda thing. I'll tell you what, guys, let's just stop fucking talking about it. Let's just put out some games. Uh, Microsoft say they're not going to make Bethesda games exclusive yet. Uh, speaking at the Jefferies Interactive Entertainment Conference, Xbox Chief Financial Officer Tim Stewart talked about the company's plan of growing their customer base uh, following the acquisition of Bethesda. He said that Microsoft uh, doesn't have intentions, quote, of just pulling all of Bethesda content out of Sony or Nintendo or otherwise. We highly encourage cross-platform play simply from this landscape of if it's good for the gaming ecosystem, it's good for us. Classic rising tide lifts all boats. Uh, and he says what we want is the long run is that that content uh, to be either first or better or best or your pick of differentiated experience mm -hmm. on our platforms. Yeah, that's a bit of a wishy-washy statement, isn't it? That's it's just, like we still haven't figured out what we want to do. Totally, and you know, that, like it's going to have to be different for every game. It's going to be, oh, maybe the Death Loop DLC drops first on Windows platforms or Xbox platforms. Yeah, um, uh, and maybe like uh, the the thing is, like obviously they have a very good system base, hardware base with across Xbox and windows pcs mm -hmm. they've got they do have a pretty large audience i mean a massive audience that they can sell their games to but it doesn't really benefit them to exclude the other markets particularly early on mm -hmm. so we never thought they were going to be exclusives well i didn't think they were going to be exclusives out of the gate obviously Death i didn't Loop think exclusives out of the gate i did think that there would be some <clears throat> exclusives where they just force you into it but yeah totally um yeah you know like it's going to be interesting, I think, in 18 months when the new systems have kind of, are kind of settling into a new groove, mm -hmm. support for the uh, last gen systems starts to stop and, um, and then it, the focus becomes on, all right, let's move our hardware and let's make uh, Starfire or whatever it is. What's the Bethesda space game? Starfield. Starfield. Yeah. Uh, let's make Starfield uh, an exclusive with a... Series X skin, Starfield skin, yeah. by the console bundle. And it's like, you know, that's when they're going to start trying to move their hardware more so that they just increase the, the hardware sales there, I reckon. Do you reckon they would do something <laughs> as big as, like, season passes exclusive to Xbox platforms? So, like, you can get the base game, but, like, any sort of expansion stuff comes because I, I guess it's like maybe they, they could do timed exclusives where you just go all right like it's going to come out here a month before it comes out anywhere else and that is probably what they'll end up doing yeah. um but i i do think that uh part of part of their purchase is is that it, ultimately it feels like what they want is for people to subscribe to game pass and so to subscribe to game pass i feel like you really need to justify that ongoing thing and for me the way you do that is like you oh i still i mean i don't know i guess if if i had the choice between even if it came out on ps5 and xbox series x and on ps5 i needed to spend a 100 bucks to get the game or i already had it on game pass then yeah i suppose that still gets me there and if for some reason someone doesn't have oh if they don't have a game pc or a series x then they just get it on ps5 yeah okay that's fine I just, sorry, you saw my thinking. <laughs> yeah. You saw my my literal like, I, here's what I think. And then hang on a second. And then I stopped being someone who was on camera and started just being someone who was like thinking about a problem. Um, uh, yeah, so obviously like it, it's still way too early to know exactly what they want to do. They probably don't know what they want to do with all this stuff as well. I, I, I just feel like whatever they do, they're just inherently in the stronger position. Like putting yeah. those games out on even if they put the exactly the same out, game out on multiple platforms that idea of like oh you can technically get it for like 12 bucks or whatever game pass is um on this one is just is very difficult to to walk past yeah and they're in an interesting 
position as well with the Bethesda IP where, you know, Halo obviously is going to remain an exclusive to, well, not obviously, but will likely remain an exclusive to Microsoft platforms forever. Mm -hmm. Um, Much as you would see that you wouldn't see The Last of Us on any other platform or Mario on any other platform in the foreseeable future while the like landscape is that is how it is but bethesda games have been a cross-platform publisher for so long yeah that that the fan bases for bethesda titles are scattered across every platform so this it's not like people bought the bethesda console so they could play the bethesda exclusives mm. like yeah like yeah yeah, you yeah, see yeah. With sony so yeah. it's like microsoft still want to have good uh, you know, Bethesda to be held in a good light and mm-hmm. and by abandoning large amounts of the fan groups that aren't attached to the Xbox ecosystem, um, which I'm sure they probably are with their PCs but are not interested in gaming on their PC or whatever, there'd be reasons all over the place. But, like, I mean, Gus plays fucking Doom on his Switch like a yeah. madman. <laughs> I know. I know. And, like, I, we can get him codes for that game on any platform he wants. He's like, no, no, it's best here. <laughs> All 22 frames a second. Um, so, it's like, yeah, they would they would definitely be damaging a, an audience relationship by cutting those people out, particularly at this stage, without enough warning, which, uh, you know, enough warning is, is like two years probably, 18 months, two years, when, when the console generation starts to settle in. Mm. But yeah, yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see uh, what they do. I don't know. Like, I just feel, I feel like they, uh, they're just in an incredibly strong position and... Let's just stop talking about it and let's just start putting out some games. That's what oh, yeah. you need to do because all their talk is like, oh, we don't know where we're going to put these games out. I just need you to put out any game. I literally just need any game coming out of a Microsoft Studio that I can play. That's, and let, that's let's just make these I'm games doing. not Fallout 76. Let, that's the most important thing. Yeah. Um, let's make these games epic, I assume, fantasy games because uh, renowned epic uh, author, fantasy author Brandon Sanderson, uh, revealed that he is working on a video game as we speak. He says he's under a non-disclosure agreement and can't say more about the nature of the project other than the developer is, quote, fairly large. Um, apparently, he's not doing the bulk of the writing. He's providing a lot of the law and I guess like <coughs> world building and uh, allowing the game writers to actually write the the plot of the game, the dialogue of the game. But that is a, um, I mean, this is an exciting move, Peter. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like I've not read any sense, and, and I know you're a big fan. Oh, wait, I know he's like a pop. No, you have. I thought you. I read know he's like a popcorn. Have you fantasy. not read the Stormlight Archives? Hang on. I, this is because we don't have any footage of it. <laughs> I have, I have that the I have this one, I have this one, and haven't read it. Star Sight. Which is probably like partway through. Yeah, look, Scott, I got gifted. That's the it. second book. It's the second book in a series. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So I was like, no, I can't really start here. Oh my goodness! Uh, it- I thought you had read the Stormlight Archives. No, you, would you say love you said the those Stormlight words Ar- and that they mean nothing to me. I thought you had read Mistborn. No, you would love Mistborn. <laughs> I thought uh, you had read the latter end of the Wheel of Time after the original <laughs> author died. You would love the you latter love end of the <laughs> Wheel of Time after the original author died. Um, yeah, look. Uh, I hey, d- it's us. Oh, hang on. What did I do there? Oh, we're still live on that shit. Um, um, so, yeah. okay. Well, so, let yeah, me t- you take t- over. You tell, yeah, absolutely. You tell me what's good about Brandon Sanderson that would make an interesting video game lore. So, uh, it is slightly disappointing that he's not writing the plot, I suppose. But I would, I would say that actually Sanderson's real strength is coming up with phenomenal worlds and, and world building. That he has, I mean, he's so prolific. He's the opposite of George R. R. Martin, where he's like, in the, in the space of time where George R. R. Martin has not put out a new book. Yeah. Sanderson has put out, wait, when did, when did... Uh, I'm, I can't be bothered looking up. He's put out like probably <laughs> seven books in that time. He's, he's done the he's entire Stormlight He's the Stephen archive. King of fantasy. Like, look at this. What am I looking at? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he wrote all that in the time that George R. R. Martin just wrote a blog post saying, I'm having trouble writing a book. To be fair, 
George R. R. Martin's blog post was that big. Um, and the new one came out yesterday. Uh, uh, anyway, so on. it's a good he, bit. But, you know, um, we'll move on. He is a um, uh, so he's very good. Um, he's very good author. The idea of him working on a video game, doing the world building, doing the law, putting something together to me is exciting because he comes up with very interesting magic systems. He comes up with really great um, uh, sort of high fantasy twists i suppose so that's why i am interested in seeing uh what he did that he he um tried to get mistborn which is uh, one of his series phenomenal magic system so much fun uh it was a, a game tried to get off the ground with that but it never really happened because it's just a very difficult process of making a video game uh but now he's dipping his toe in and it's most likely not going to be uh, anything of his work otherwise i imagine he would be writing it but he's probably coming in and, and um doing a different ip yeah my understanding of him and maybe it's just because i've like through the information dump that you've given me about these two worlds he sanderson is like <clears throat> his books are like the dresden files of fantasy they're like popcorn thrilling yep fast like yep. it's just like more 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 yep totally <clears throat> yeah uh like uh, the stormlight is probably the most high fantasy of the stuff that he's done the most c cerebral i suppose yeah uh, and a lot of his stuff is it's more like um he's like a, he's basically somewhere in the middle of um uh george r, r. martin and like uh Locke lamora like it's that it's somewhere in there of like gentleman thief style fun characters in interesting high fantasy worlds. So yeah, yeah cool, very cool. So that's exciting. Uh, we won't see it for ages. Um, I don't know. I don't know what fairly large is if he's just being polite. Um, but uh, whether it's like a smaller, you know, it's hip hipster whale. It's hipster whale. Hipster whale definitely <laughs> making a video game based on his writing. <laughs> I would love if it's hipster whale. That would um, be cool. Also, read Stormlight Archives, everybody. Oh, my God. New book came out yesterday. <laughs> it's like that. It's like this is how big the book is, lying down. Um, <laughs> next up, speaking of dense releases of content, Immortals yeah. Phoenix Rising. Post-launch. Um, post-launch. We're not even at. We're <laughs> yeah, pre-launch. The game's not right out now. yet, and they're promoting the post-launch. Uh, Ubisoft came out and uh, talked about the season pass that they're going to be dropping. And normally, season passes are not something that I would be like, hey, this is interesting news, particularly when you haven't even played the real game yet. Um, but <laughs> the uh, but the thing that I like about this is they're doing three sort of small expansions, and all three of them are quite different. So the first one is called A New God, where Phoenix travels to Olympus uh, to do sort of like trials. That seems pretty standard in terms of the kind of thing you would be expecting for an expansion to this game. Yeah, it the looks like more advanced kind of like world puzzles and combat yeah. arenas. Like, yeah, it, it'd just be kind of the gauntlet stuff that is in the main game. Totally. But Myths of the Eastern Realm, which is the one you're seeing right now, actually removes us from the Greek setting and uh, puts us into Chinese mythology. You play as a new hero called Ku, and uh, you're uh, trained in martial arts, so the combat is um, very different. There's tons of different monsters and deities and stuff because none of the i assume none of the original ones are there because they're all greek and this is all coming from chinese mythology and uh you're doing a lot of um, martial arts and then the third one which is the lost gods you go back to the greek island but you're now like a brawler game isometric view again a <laughs> new hero and uh taking on um a a new island within the Greek mythology. So I just feel like they're putting out these small mini games, which I'm quite interested in. Isn't it exciting that like the engine is the same, everything's the same, but just swinging the camera into an isometric position makes it an <laughs> totally. entirely new experience. Totally, yeah. But it totally does. It's like, oh, that's really cool. I want to, I want to play that version of the game. And it um, becomes much more like, I mean, all we know about this so far is that, but you see it, it sort of becomes it looks like it becomes more like ARPG, Diablo, Brawler, sort yeah, of like, like little dungeon crawly, hacky slashy kind of stuff. <clears throat> um, th there seem to be more ranged weapons there than what we at least experienced when we had our hands on uh, ranged melee weapons. Sorry. So, uh, yeah, that is that is exciting. And then uh, the final thing is this, <laughs> which is they released a trailer for the game. <laughs> It's a crossover with Adventure Time. Um, 
where Phoenix turns up and saves Finn and what's the dog's name? Jake. Uh, I've never Jake. seen Adventure Time. <laughs> I think it's Finn and Jake. Uh, saves them from Cerberus <laughs> and and then flies away. And it's like, it's not really funny. Um, it's kind of just like, all right. But I don't know if this means that we're getting some sort of Adventure Time stuff in the game. That just seems like a very strange thing which to do game, for one commercial. Which game did the Rick and Morty thing? Something big recently had Rick and Morty going like, oh, was it? No, maybe it wasn't game. Maybe it was like Rick and Morty and for a, a movie or something. Chat right, okay. will remember. Remember, they're just like walking along in a planet and they're talking shit like they usually do. League of Legends voiceovers? Uh, no. Um, like, but that'd be fun. Morty, uh, Death Stranding, Death Stranding, Dust Bunny's on it. Yes. Death? What? You haven't seen that? No. Let me bring it up. Let me bring it up. Um, uh, so, yeah, so that, I, I don't know what this means in terms of Adventure Time with Immortals Phoenix Rising if they're just doing this is like uh, appealing. Adventure Time also uh, uh, like a series that hits a demographic that is um, uh, that is um, I guess go. on point for who they're trying to get, but but I don't know. Like that series is ended, Here. right? Here's Rick and Morty. It's like just classic Rick and Morty. <laughs> so funny. And where, what was this? Was this an ad for Death Stranding? Yeah, it was. Yeah, right. Pre-release. <laughs> That's so funny. That's, so funny. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, so Adventure Time finished in September third, twenty eighteen. Someone said it had. Uh, B Mac in the chat says it has, but also it hasn't. They're doing four extra specials for HBO Max. Right. Okay. So that might be part of this like collab thing. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what's going on there. If there's some, I'm sh I, maybe there's some sort of hint in the game. Yeah, maybe, but it could also just be part of like they may have seen that Rick and Morty thing and gone like, "What's a safer version of <laughs> yeah, that?" Totally. For, yeah, As like a marketing play, it's like yep. you know, there's heaps of people that like Adventure Time. It got us they, talking about it. Totally. Um, yeah, that, that's what I think it probably is. I doubt there's going to be. Maybe there'll be a relic that's an Adventure Time yeah, reference or something like that. Yeah, I reckon, like I reckon that. there'll be a tease in there, but it's not like the fourth expansion is suddenly it skins the game. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I like this thing of the three different expansions being, or at least two of them, sort of changing the game in a significant way. I think that's a cool that's a cool idea that um that uh, I I think that this sort of game feels right for these sort of big epic games where you can go well you've spent sixty hours already playing the game in this way now here's a twist on how it actually happens totally and like give it give it another year and there'll be a freaking immortals moba <laughs> like with the amount totally. of new characters and totally stuff they're designing yeah 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 it's, yeah, like, yeah, it's all just and they've already gone isometric the next step is just lanes <laughs> yep, the, there and you then go. we're done <laughs> there you go uh and then it's a rick and morty voiceover pack and an adventure time voiceover pack and yep. it's all come full circle <laughs> um moving on and there is so demon souls a game that i am whew, <laughs> thoroughly enjoying um that second archstone area is a real prick though the mine um, the mine that is yeah. i don't i i do have i just i mean we're going to talk about demon souls tomorrow so i can't go too far on it but i just yeah. as we spoke about yesterday pete they keep putting in poison levels in all in from <laughs> keep putting in poison levels and that's very annoying i also just can we just stop putting mine levels in video games they're never interesting to be in um, they're all, like those tight confined spaces are always just annoying uh, more than anything else. But, uh, but something that they have added in the game that has not been in the previous game is there is a secret door. Uh, that there is. Have you encountered the secret door? No, no, I haven't played much actually. Um, it will, again, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Uh, I, I will keep playing, but it's like not a priority for me at the moment. Yeah. But, um, um yeah, there, there's like <laughs> the secret door is interesting because Bluepoint have done such a good job of recreating 
a PS3 version of Demon Souls mm-hmm. that everything feels identical and then mm. suddenly there's something that wasn't there before. <laughs> totally. Um, it's in World 1-3. Uh, you go via the tower now at Archstone and uh, it's just in the Boltarian Palace, but no one has figured out yet how to open the mystery door. Um, but there was, after they discovered the door, there was a Reddit user called Cosmic Vagabond who managed to use the remaster's new photo mode, the PS5 photo mode, to peer behind the door, revealing a moody balcony and a strange glowing item on a pedestal. Uh, so now everyone is trying to figure out how to open the door. Blue Point then tweeted out a mm-hmm. picture um, that tagged a bunch of very big um, Souls streamers and YouTubers. And uh, they just said a symphony of rumors and attached a picture to their tweet that was basically like a postcard, uh, wish you were here, and showed what's actually inside the um, on that balcony yeah um and you can see there that the uh there seems to be a body lying down there's an item on a bench or some sort of stool or something uh so (laughs) people are trying to theory craft what it is and i've seen uh i've seen people think that it's uh unlocked like you can't get in there because people are trying to get in the door have you been on reddit and seen how they've tried to get in no no so they they're trying to like you know wear certain things to open the door uh they're trying to um uh, hold weapons the world tendency in the game get your world tendency in a certain way uh have the platinum trophy some some people turned up with like 79 coins uh i think which was uh, a way that in the blue point shadow of the colossus remake you unlocked something there by holding 79 coins so people have done that none yeah, of it's right. working um so it might also be something that is a timed thing that will open up at some point people have thought that maybe it's dlc maybe it's a reveal for blue point doing a symphony of the night remake um mm. and because they had referenced something um let me get it up uh on that tweet that uh, a year ago they tweeted out an image of a red moon with bats flying in front of it and said so calm this spooky night a symphony of rumors not one but two return from shadow a resistance to dart home as black monsters escape twisted hills to wander lands and siphon souls filter your candy collections soft from solid and be eco-friendly have a metal halloween and so that's the second time they've said a symphony of rumors they did that on the wish you were here thing is it going to be some sort of like confirmation that they're remaking uh a uh sort of symphony of the night um which would be very strange to add that reveal in another game um yeah i i'm pretty sure sony own uh demon souls um not oh, from software from don't oh okay right I think that's the case, which is, um, which is, it could be how they're like, because from you know, you would think that maybe from software wouldn't be cool with them remaking their game and then adding some shit a, for a, a teaser for some, something else. Yeah. But it, it was like, if it's like a Sony thing, then that would make sense. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Um, I may be wrong, but I thought that 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 was the deal that was struck with that first one. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, I just love this kind of stuff. I'm just now glued to the Reddit and I just refresh <laughs> it every now and then to see whether or not we've figured out the door. Um, but there's, uh, some co- there's some coder going like, oh, fuck, I made that door interactable and it w- I wasn't meant to. <laughs> it's just like, totally. There's actually nothing there. <laughs> well, they uh, so I, I literally just Googled it then. And two hours ago, there's an article that says that someone found a way to get super close to entering the courtyard behind the secret door by bugging out some walls and stuff but when they managed to glitch through part of a wall they found that developers actually put invisible walls as another layer behind the actual wall that you can't interact with at all so it's like they've glass boxed it in uh even there so (laughs) at some point we're gonna know what's in this door and jesus christ it better be incredible where's man fight dragon when you need him um lance McDon- yeah, it's totally. McDonald yeah. On, yeah. on Twitter. He, yeah, he's just always breaking Souls games. <laughs> well, there, I think there was also a cut mm. level from Demon Souls, right? Uh, yeah, but I don't think they added it. You don't reckon? 
I don't. Th- well, well, look, maybe they ha- maybe that's what this is. Yeah, um, but it's certainly been. Um, uh, yeah, hasn't been announced that they they've yeah, done that. Yeah, no, you would definitely think, not in the main you, game. You, you would have thought that that would be a. I mean, I guess it, bec- it stand the game stands by itself because there's nothing else to play. <laughs> so it's like they don't need they didn't need any stronger uh, marketing than you can play Demon Souls and it looks shit hot. Yeah. Um, they didn't need to say plus that thing you never exactly, got to play yeah, exactly before yeah. launch, so they can, yeah. yeah they can keep that um for you know post launch excitement. Yeah. That could be cool. That could, that be, could cool. be cool. Also, the the other thing that could be interesting, which I don't think they've done this, but they could have um, not necessarily the cut level, but they could have, this could be an expansion that Blue Point have made um, that uh, because, because I mean, a lot of the discussion around the, the remaster of the game has been how faithful do you stick to the original mm. and and it's basically one developer interpreting another developer's work and at some point they could be like oh we actually felt that you know the damage of this sword or the like the reach of this enemy and stuff was a little annoying so we're going to change that whereas from were like no that's exactly what we wanted it to be uh, yeah. and that sort of push and pull whereas if this was a piece of expanded content that they made then it's like well it, we now get to do our version of what demon souls is now that we have you know relatively faithfully updated the original game so yeah we'll see yes that'd be fun for them to be able to just build a little gauntlet you know a few hours of yeah game exactly that yeah that we never got to see otherwise that could be very cool so anyway yeah. keep an eye on that door uh something else you could keep an eye on cyberpunk series x and xbox one footage there was a night city wire uh like a short one it was just a 10 minute video that came out overnight giving uh fans a look at cyberpunk 2077 running on the xbox one x and the xbox series x uh via backwards compatibility so this is not the series x footage uh that will become that how the game will look next year when it comes out officially for next gen consoles this is just how it will look when you're running it on a series x this is a one x at the moment this is the one x here and i pete i don't know about you i could not tell the difference every time they switch between the two i was just like all right uh yeah tell me i'm wrong no i think i think you're probably right i think i could see uh more frame rate like a, a lower frame rate in the one X, mm-hmm. particularly in the open world. And they definitely captured that. They captured this footage, I think very, um, cleverly, uh, Where it's not side by side. They don't have a side by side. No, but also they, it's very slow panning. Mm-hmm. Like we're not seeing any tearing. So we don't see any tearing with like low frame rates or anything. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Right. And it's like, uh, it's all very smooth and considered uh, any movement. Yeah. Um, obviously this is on the series X you'd expect it to run well. Um, it does look obviously like it's, it's, it's hard to not imagine a mind blowing thing. Um, mm. it, this doesn't look mind blowing, but no. when you, th- I guess when you think about what it's doing, it is like, if you compare this to how GTA five looks, it, it does look like a, a step above, which it should because we're fucking nine years after GTA five came out. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like this is a big living world. It's never going to be like, um, it's not going to be demon souls detail in moment to moment because it, it wouldn't be able to render that. You would think again, these are just like captures. Here's Keanu. Steph told me yesterday that Keanu Reeves exists in this world as well as this Johnny Sims or whatever his name is, Johnny, whatever. What? <laughs> yeah. Johnny Silverhand. Johnny really? Silverhand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I was like, so it's Keanu Reeves dead and this Johnny Silverhand's guy is like, had his face augmented to look like the famous actor Keanu Reeves. And she's like, that no. Like, right. Incredible. <laughs> so weird. Um, the thing, the, the, the driving around the world, sorry, I'm going to skip through a bit. The driving around the world is like, looks great looks smooth on both systems you're right mm-hmm. i don't really see much of a difference um, have we seen footage two. on on consoles of the game it's yet? all it's all been pc yeah right so that's really we're really looking at console footage as opposed to necessarily like hey here's how it looks at, between these two totally yeah but um you would expect ray tracing and stuff on the series x yeah um 
uh, I don't know if it was on in these captures. The, the, yeah, where I'm impressed is actually the interiors and interactions with people. Mm -hmm. Like there's a there's a lot of light bouncing around here, which is like this is quite beautiful. Yep. When even when I think about The Witcher, everything felt staged. Definitely, the worlds like they had enough they had enough bodies in them to feel alive, but everything kind of felt staged and a bit mm -hmm. propped up. Um, I mean, this guy's very staged, but he's trying to be sexy for the person he's expecting. <laughs> um, uh, everything looks great. Uh, and, and, you know, if, if we take this for this video was like for um, showing off how the consoles are working, but it is also like most of a mission cut down. It's worth yeah. going and watching because obviously we're destroying it here by um, talking over it. But um, it feels like, again, and it's edited, but it does feel like the moving between components of this mission uh, makes this world feel f huge and yes. really accessible. Yes. Every door opens. Oh, and I want to talk about this guy because he's Woodman and he's an Aussie. Hang on. Amazing. It's basically you. If you <laughs> shake your head. Basically me. Yeah. He's got the same <laughs> amount of rings that you normally wear, so. <laughs> Just the one. Um, the uh yeah so i mean i guess because it is the console footage then that is that's impressive and you're right like the light and everything this is doing stuff that we definitely did not see in the witcher we, you don't see in many rpgs really like this level of like ambient glow everywhere and like diffused light that is stuff that's very difficult to make look good um the the, the thing that my main takeaway from looking at this and obviously do not know anything about where we are in the game, whether this is supposed to be some sort of like relatively abandoned part of the world or something, but the the world feels very sparse that when they were driving through the street and stuff, it was like you would see occasionally someone else. There were cars. Obviously, you don't want too many cars because you don't want to be fighting traffic as you drive the whole time. But it, like even wandering around here, uh, I think I linked in some footage uh, from that initial the forty eight minute walkthrough. Yeah, is um, there a moment? Yeah, uh, if you actually just click that link, it should uh, it should jump you to the time. Hang on, I'll just oh, do it and then yeah. I'll tell you the time. I, I can't because yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna... Go to uh 12 minutes and 45 seconds so this was the initial 48 minute walk through and mm. if you just look at like the amount of people within this space totally. obviously it's running on pc obviously it's running at the highest possible specs and this is not the shipped game and all that sort of thing but i remember watching this and going jesus this is like a real city and when i was watching the footage there i went oh yeah this is a video game city like this is occasionally people wander around like even watchdogs has more um watchdogs legion has more people on the street than that's than, uh, a, what we that's saw a there. good point i wonder if um i wonder if the uh concessions that they've made to to get it working on not the highest end pc mm. is rather than removing some graphic fidelity they're removing ai ai, AI bits yep. incidental look, ai yeah yeah, which very well could do. Uh, on PC, The Witcher had a NPC slider. <laughs> so it was basically like That's right. you can just stack the world with more people. And so we may see that on PC as well. And that, yeah, like you said, that, yeah. that seems like uh, knowing the very little that I know about how to develop video games, the less things that it just needs to hold in its memory position-wise of people wandering around doing different routines, <laughs> uh, then, yeah, you can focus that processing power on something else. I but, guess... Uh, I guess that was like a intersection crossing in the middle of the day and this is a seedy back alley. Totally. There's, yeah. There's quite a lot of people in this seedy back alley, but not really. You're right. But like, it, look does, at the it feels it feels a lot more empty. And yeah. there's someone you can interact with who's always gonna be there. They had a little kissy I assume that's someone yeah. that you can you can have a fun time with. Mm -hmm. Um but you're right that you're bumping into people in this other in that other clip and this totally. does feel sparse. But even if you just jump back 15 seconds, um, the this is running on the Xbox One X. And yep. if you just look at like, look at the smoke and at the reflections on the water there, like that looks, 
that looks phenomenal. Um, yeah. Even when it's crushed down on a YouTube video playing on Twitch, uh, <laughs> that looks good. So yeah, we're going to see. Um, I think they're they're going to pull off a pretty impressive technical feat, regardless. But uh, yeah. yeah, I wish I really do wish this game. I don't want you to delay it, but I do wish it was coming out on next gen consoles exclusively. A, well, not even exclusively, but like with the next gen patch when it came out. Because the mm. next gen patch for the games are not coming out until mid, no, sort of like early next year. So by yeah. that point, I will have finished my got time your thirty eighty. Got my thirty eighty. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> um, the uh, last couple of quick stories here. Yakuza producer wants to make a Sonic game. When asked which Sega series is his favorite, uh, Sato, who is the um, uh, he's the producer for Yakuza. Um, uh, like a dragon is that why yeah like a dragon is a new like one. a dragon yep yeah. um yeah, my doorbell's said, ringing i'm gonna leave you with this footage please go for it i uh, said i've been involved in yakuza for a long time it's my favorite series or maybe even my own child but when asked what other sega uh, ip he would want to work on he said sonic quote after all when you hear sega you think sonic i'd like to get involved once at least but for me the so-called sonic is well if i were to do it i wouldn't do sonic as it was i would make a completely different sonic and for me, uh, something like this, I love the idea of someone coming in and just doing something with Sonic. I think that the problem, so we've spoken about this a couple of times. The problem with Sonic is that I don't find his gameplay fun when he's not running. Like when he's not going at full tilt, this is shit. Like look at this jumping. That is terrible. This is terrible feeling stuff because yeah. his movement in the air just sucks. When he's running and speeding through, that's cool, but you can't make a whole level like that. As soon as you hit something, then that is a massive downer in terms of like a video game feel moment and it breaks your momentum. So then people have tried to do different things with Sonic. When they do different things with Sonic, oh my God, I know what just arrived. Fuck. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> um, uh, when they do different things with Sonic, they still keep this cool running thing. And I think that they should just get Sonic. Sonic should not run anymore. Sonic should be a completely different kind. Like, he should be a part of a gang, part of a thing, doing something completely different. And I genuinely think that the Yakuza games have so many interesting ideas in them. Every game has, like, the main core game, which is, like, the brawler or the turn-based um, uh, fighter in this case, but they have 10 to 15 mini games and different sort of like mechanics within it that are really interesting that, uh, that I do feel like someone with that kind of brain could just come in and go, okay, Sonic, what are we going to do with this in a way that you have never actually expected? Remove all the things that people think they like about Sonic because they'll realize the only thing they like about Sonic is that he's got spiky hair. That's the only thing that we like about Sonic. Okay. I, I think they also, I think people also like... You know, obviously there was love for Sonic because some didn't people have anything were, else were to play back then. Yeah, exactly. They were unfortunate enough to have gotten a Dreamcast instead of a good console, and so they they played a lot of Sonic. And the the animated show is actually really good. Yep. For for kids, yep. and the the movie, despite having a bumpy start, came out and was good. Totally. Uh, and. There's a lot of character to Sonic now, and I think like developers realized that the gameplay wasn't good, <laughs> and started to have interactions between Sonic and Knuckles and Tails, and and like the later games, even though they still weren't good games, were very much about character. Yeah. And Yakuza guy is like he knows how to make characters interact in ways that are funny. Totally. So, and and also knows how to do um, uh, ensemble cast stuff. Because yep. all the Yakuza games have great ensembles and that's something that like Sonic has is interesting friends. Totally. I would I would love to see this. I think he would do a very good job of breathing new life into because as well, like yeah, the animated show worked for kids and stuff, but I I don't know how many kids are excited about Sonic. No. The way they're excited about Pokemon or Mario or yeah. you know, like he just doesn't get talked about anymore. So it's like play to the 30 year olds who grew up playing Sonic and make something a bit more adult. <laughs> make him a really pimp. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Make him a pimp. A pimp with a heart of gold, which I, I think is a bit of a contradiction. <laughs> in a nappy. Terms, but yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So people, people are done with the Sonic talk. Pete, yeah. you told me what you did. You're insane. Show the people what you did. I did it. 
but show them what you actually what that actually is it's a 3090 <laughs> he bought a 3090 and it wasn't my fault so <laughs> i bought a 3080 like everyone did everyone in the world bought one. <laughs> it's like that's all i need no one needs yeah. a 3090 it's stupid no and i still believe that yeah however there were some 3090s in stock so i bought one but <laughs> and i'd cancelled my 3080 when i bought the 3090. wait um, fuck. when did that happen two days ago oh no 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 this is this is the story goes on uh the 3090s were in stock and i bought one and then i got a message oh, from right. the people saying oh you were uh, you're now first in line because you that's just right. missed out while i was that's reading right. in stock someone bought the last one so then i had to wait for another card and i was like oh, do i cancel this and get like a 3070 or something and i just i was actually about to i was going to cancel at the start of this week and just go and get a 3070 because that's really all you need <laughs> and then i got the shipping notification i was like oh okay <laughs> that's insane so anyway i have a 39 you know uh well and i'm still sitting here without a 3080 with nothing like a fucking oh, the 3070 is in stock right now i could get there, it delivered tomorrow. there are lots of 3070s around and is it yeah, worth it's a it? weapon i think the 3070 is 2080 ti kind of tier yeah right um uh, no i want a future proof if i'm gonna spend like 12 1100 bucks on a graphics card i may as well spend 1400 bucks on a graphics card right and unlike you four thousand dollars on a graphics card <laughs> yeah the yeah get a 3080 when they're back in stock this is just this you is coward <laughs> well i'm excited to see what your games look like um because that is a that's i'll upload the them to twitter video yeah so it's like weird compression. yeah good yeah but make sure you stream it to me over vmix <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so that i i can really get the those sweet pixels <laughs> com compressed um that's it for the news we're done we're yeah done. yeah um, there's leftovers Oh, there's that. Well, I was just looking at the time, can, but I can just quickly two minutes of the leftovers. leftovers. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see you added a leftover. I added the leftover. Yeah. That's okay, why right. I want to do it. Right. Okay. My first leftover was 12 minutes. The game has been delayed to 2021. There's nothing significant about it other than the fact that like that game, I've, <laughs> that game, I've known about that game for four years now. And I just, I just want it now for a yeah. game that is only 12 minutes long. They certainly are taking their sweet ass time to develop it. Um, yeah, so, and as Peter, a direct competitor to cyberpunk, you would think they'll try and take advantage of the fact that cyberpunk's not out yet and get out. But, I know. know. And now that you've got your 3090 and you can really I'm play 12 that Daisy Ridley on... voiceover. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and the other thing that I saw this morning is that um, through a, a couple of little like uh, um, dev tools, you can stream your uh, Xbox Series X to Windows 10. So if you've got a ser Series X, you can stream it to your PC. And that you might think, why um <laughs> and i was like but you have a 3090 in your pc but I have so a that's why so obviously a lot of people don't have a 3090 in their pc um and streaming series x to their computer might be a practical way for them to play games while their partner's watching something else on the tv or whatever yeah but the thing that i'm actually i actually think is really beneficial is the fact that the uh PC Game Pass and Xbox Game Pass are still different. So there's content on Xbox Game Pass that isn't on PC Game Pass. For example, the Destiny mm. 2 DLC for Saken and Shadowkeep yes. are on the Xbox Game Pass, but not on the Windows PC Game Pass. Yes. So you could, in theory, still sit at your computer while the television is being used and stream your um, the, the content that's on the Xbox Game Pass across to your PC. That was, I mean, again, it's pretty nothing news, but uh, that's one thing that could benefit me while Steph's watching The Crown or whatever. I could be, I mean, let's face it, she's just playing Destiny. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I two think weeks I'd anyway. Like strike that, but, reverse it. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's like, I'll be playing Demon Souls on the, on the TV, so Steph could stream the other content across. Um, um, so yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, th that is a, that's a good point with the, um, the differences in the game pass is certainly something that, uh, you know, you just want to game at your PC. That's just where I'm, I used to game at my TV and now I don't, I don't even have consoles plugged into my TV. They're just all plugged into monitors in, in, on my desk. It's just how I live now. It's yeah. stuck here forever. I, Thanks, I accepted that life a long time ago. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that's why you invest so heavily into it. Uh, well, <laughs> Pete needs to go and install that beast and uh, tell me all about it. We need to go and uh, get on with our week. We're going to be back tomorrow, obviously, um, because we have um, the Thursday show coming up for you tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. What? Oh, my God. What time did we do that show? Eight? Uh, yeah, eight. eight. We yep. do it at eight. Whew. Uh, it's going to be a ton of game talk. There's been a heap of games out, so we're just going to mainly talk video games tomorrow. Um, and uh, we want to hear from you guys as well about what you've been playing, what you uh, are excited about with the titles that we're talking about. So please come along, hang out. Let's get some thoughts out about all these new exciting games because I realized we need to talk about them because... Uh, now, Hyrule Warriors is coming out, Cyberpunk is coming out, and Immortals Phoenix Rising is coming out, and then that's basically it for the rest of the year in terms of games that I'm interested in that I know about. Um, yeah. So, we did it. We, there was all this fear about the fact that this is going to be a, some insane month for video games. Now, they're all here. I have them all, and I'm like, <laughs> all right, what am I going to play next? Yeah. I have finished checked, I've any of them. A, I've checked a few of them off. I did, I've finished yeah, COD, true. I finished Spider-Man. I think you finished Spider-Man as well. I finished Spider-Man, I finished COD. COD. I've nearly finished Bug Snacks. Um, yeah, nice. I've played, yeah, about I'll as- I'll definitely have finished I've Dean played about as much tomorrow. Destiny as a normal human can handle. There and you go. Uh, And Steph's played more than that. Um, so yeah, there's still so much to play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so we look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Thanks very much for hanging out with the news this morning, Peter. We're, we're going to raid Granny. We're going to raid uh, Granny. That's playing exciting. Dead by Daylight. Let's raid Granny, the user at Granny. There wow. it is. That's and uh, and in the meantime, I guess we'll back, back out. There? Should we back out? Let's back it out. Let's back out. Oh, fuck. Dust. <laughs> <laughs>